As of today, Prombase exists a little bit less than a year and the platform is still actively developing and relatively new. This is what makes it a great place to start a side hustle with a relatively low barrier to entry and doing quite creative, quite enjoyable, in my personal opinion, work. Prompt engineering. In this video, I will share with you my advice on how the platform works, what you can do there as a beginner, and what strategies will help you get your first sale on Prompbase. From the start, I want to mention that I create my journey prompts only. So this video is going to be about image generation AI on Prompbase, not so much text generation AI. So I won't be talking about uh, GPT-4 prompts, but I think that my journey advice that I'm going to give you in this video is going to be applicable to also other image generation software uh, like stable diffusion, other types of software. So the first thing you have to figure out if you wanna have your first sale on Prompbase is how to get your prompts approved. There is a human being or a team of human beings who review your prompts on Prompbase, every prompt you submit. They have to correspond to certain submission rules in order for them to be approved. This can be easily overlooked because everything seems so straightforward that you just look at a couple of other prompts and you, you're you very excited to start on your own. And I personally, in my first few prompts that I submitted, I didn't read the rules before. And I actually regretted that because both of those first prompts were declined. So here are some very common mistakes. I think the main problem that most beginner prompt engineers make is they make a set of images that is very similar by the style, uh, but it doesn't offer the customer any variety and it doesn't show different options of how this prompt can be used. So you have to make sure there is a variable that can be changed in your prompt, but the overall style of the prompt and the idea of it doesn't change. I will show you now an example of my first prompt that was decline. And as you can see here, we have a set of mermaids uh, that look very similar to one another. And my idea behind this first prompt is that you would be able to modify the appearance of the girl, change their hair color, change their skin color. But unfortunately, this didn't offer enough variety. So if I would be correcting that prompt and making it better, I would uh, definitely play more with the subject of the image while keeping the same marine theme with the fishes and underwater topics and stuff. I would change the subject. I would introduce other people, kids, older people, guys, just make a diverse set of subjects in the prompt to illustrate that basically a person can put whoever they want into the prompt and it will work. And that prompt would be the correct one and would be approved. Another mistake that I think many beginner prompt creators can make is making guessable prompts. And this was my second prompt. I made it really, really guessable. It looks good. I will show it somewhere here. And the idea is fine, but the prompt contained not so much words. It contained only 14 words and as you see these pictures, you can actually guess how to engineer something very similar without paying me uh, $2 to know the prompt, the exact prompt. Uh, and further on, I understood that 14 words it is a little bit too little for a prompt. Maybe there are some prompts that would work with that quantity of words, but usually I try to use somewhere between 25 to 35 words. If you use over 40 words, I think Midjourney starts ignoring parts of your prompt because it's just too much information for it. But keeping it in the golden spot somewhere around 30 words is perfect from my experience. The second thing, after you generated your images, you have to explain your prompt. You have to represent your prompt with the text description that goes on the website first. And then you have to create prompt instructions and um, tips for the people that will be purchasing your prompts and actually thinking about how to use it. So my advice here would be to try to organize text in a good way. 
So first of all, in your description, that's going to be visible to everybody who views your prompt, try to, first of all, create text on your own. Do not use ChatGPT for it. Or if you use ChatGPT for it, make sure you have a really good prompt for ChatGPT that creates those texts for you. Because otherwise, if I come to a prompt and I see that the text is, you know, mechanically sounding like robotic, um, it doesn't make me feel like this is a genuine seller and I'm less sure about this prompt and I don't want to buy it so much anymore. I like to create custom texts that describe my prompts every time. It doesn't take a lot of time, it just takes two minutes from me, but I'm that way sure that I represent the prompt in the best way and it sounds like a human has written it. The second thing I would say, and this is both for the prompt description that is visible to everybody and for the prompt instruction that is visible only to the person that purchased your prompt, is remember to structure your text just by the rules of common sense and use good grammar, of course, but also don't make large chunks of unordered text that just overload the person's attention, but try to use bullet points, use smileys. You can very conveniently use smiley faces to do bullet points, for example, that's what I do. Uh, make them contrast nicely with the dark theme of prompt base, that would be also very uh, good. And uh, just make sure your instructions are clearly understandable. Don't just put everything there. For example, I always list all my variables in a very nice ordered list and explain every one of them, give some examples. A very good idea would be to actually give examples of variables that you used for generation of your nine example images. By the way, always use nine uh, because this looks the nicest and sometimes prompt base makes those layouts out of nine, nine pictures. So never use less than nine and prompt base actually gives you a tip on that. They advise you to not use less than nine because nine get, get the most views. So don't be lazy. Giving more prompt images allows the customer to understand that the prompt is working in different, different, different scenarios. It's not just like three times it worked, but maybe if they purchase it and try it in a custom scenario, it wouldn't work. But if you give more, they understand that yes, this works in different cases, in different scenarios with the different variables, different subjects, and so on. And explain those variables. Try to list the variables that you used in your example images because maybe the person doesn't want all nine images maybe uh, the person just wants to generate something that looks like only in one of your images and they need to know what exactly you put in the prompt to get the specifically one result that was in that prompt so it is a very nice uh, thing to indicate exact, exact variables that you use for every prompt that you're selling. So now the most important and the most interesting thing, as you already have the text prepared, as you prepared the example images, as you have everything ready, let's talk about the algorithm, or at least how I understand the algorithm on prompt base from my experience. This is, of course, not an official guideline on the algorithm on prompt base and also, it can change. So guys, look at what date this video was published and make sure that if a lot of time has passed, maybe something has changed. But uh, the way I understand the current algorithm of PromBase is that it's pretty straightforward as of now, and it gives very equal chances to different creators. As of now, what I see uh, let's look at this journey from point A, which is submitting a prompt, to point B, <laughs> or rather Z, that is actually um, getting your first sale. What happens? First, your, you submit a prompt and your prompt gets reviewed. It usually happens during 24 hours, you get a result. So in case your prompt is approved, you move to the next stage, which is waiting from, for the prompt to go live. So going live is uh, the prompt base equivalent for putting the prompt on their homepage. I will show you where the prompt exactly appears. It appears on the right side of this row called newest prompts. And as the prompt is approved, you get an email where you get a date 
when the prompt is going to go live. They don't indicate the time, but they just tell you which date it's going to go live on. So on that date, at any time, the prompt can go live and you get another email notifying you that it's already live. And at that point, the prompt appears on the homepage and stays there for not a very long time. It gradually moves to the right side as new prompts appear. So I would say maybe half an hour it's there, maybe less. But in case your prompt is hot, which means it gets a lot of views, your prompt has a chance to jump into the hottest prompts section, which is one section about the newest prompts. And in case it goes there, it's very, very beneficial for you because there it stays a little bit longer and it actually stays as long as it's popular. So the more views this prompt attracts, the longer it's going to stay there. For example, one of my prompts was very successful and got a lot of, lot of interest, which is not so crazy if you think about it. It was maybe around 120 views and 120 views one month ago gave me around five or six hours of being in the hottest prompts uh, section and it get actually gave me some sales. So the way I understand it, you're very interested to get on the homepage. There are actually no more very much working uh, approaches for you to get traffic onto your prompt, maybe only if you use some external traffic sources and connect your uh, prompt based page to Instagram, but that's a whole nother discussion. But directly in the website, you are you have to be very focused to get as much as possible out of this little window when your prompt is on the home page, because this is when it's going to be viewed. So this is the most interesting time for your prompt. And this is the time when you can monitor how many views you get. And actually, this is the time you are most likely to get your first sale. So you cannot actually influence after the prompt is submitted, you cannot influence how long your prompt's going to stay in the hottest section or in the newest section. Uh, also, what you cannot influence, unfortunately, is the time that the prompt is going to be released during that day. Because, uh, of course, if the time is popular visiting hours of the website, maybe in the US or maybe where the website is most popular, uh, the, the, the better hours, the more in attention your prompts will get. But you, it's just like a lottery. You just cannot influence which time it goes live. But you shouldn't overthink it. You have to focus on the things that you can control here. The first thing you can control here is how many prompts you are submitting. So each of your prompts is appearing on the homepage and therefore your work is uh, being published on the homepage and people actually have access to it and view it. I would advise if you want to get your first sale as soon as possible, use those slots so first you have two slots, two prompts that can be reviewed simultaneously. So you can upload two prompts and wait until they're reviewed. And as they are reviewed, you can upload more. As you get your first five sales, you can upload three prompts simultaneously. And I would advise you to take advantage of this process and try to have prompts beforehand ready so that every time a slot get, gets empty and you can submit a new prompt, you can upload it and not waste time and actually use as much as possible your capacity to submit the prompts on prompt base. So this is the first and most important factor. You're consistent, you're uploading more and more work. Of course, it doesn't make prompt base a very much passive income enterprise, let's say, because you have to work, you have to submit new prompts, especially in the beginning when nobody knows about you and there is zero sales in your profile. But as often as you do it, the, the more often you appear on the homepage. So this is very beneficial for you. And the second factor you have influence on is how actually good your prompts are and how demanded they are. Maybe they, they can even be not so good in your taste or it's generally a subjective thing but they can be demanded and i saw oftentimes not super crazy complicated prompts but they were really really getting into the hot section 
staying there for a really long time because they were demanded. Some icons are very much uh, popular on prom base. Some things for web design, some inspirations for creating websites, some commercial photographs that can be sold later on stock websites. So try to think what can be purchased, but also as a beginner, I wouldn't recommend you to overthink that because as you have little experience, it's very, very difficult to understand the market and understand the demand and what people actually need. So I would advise you to just create what you find beautiful, good, nice, good looking and upload it consistently. That's the best strategy I can advise you here. With experience, you'll be able to understand, okay, this looks more like my niche. This looks like something that people actually want and buy. So maybe I can create more prompts like this and not not do these other problems that nobody's interested in. So you will get the hang of it, I think, as you're doing it. And that's the interesting part. That's the great part of discovery and exploration. And finally, if your prompt is like super hot, extremely popular with views and maybe also with sales, I will not tell you for sure because I don't know. In prompt base, you can view the amount of views that other people have on individual prompts, but sales are displayed only for the whole profile and you cannot see how many sales this or that prompt had. So a combination of both of these, but I think views first of all, if there is a lot of views, like more than a half a thousand of views, it's very likely that it will go into the top most VAP section of from base, which is this right part right after the header of the website. As prompts go there, people are extremely likely to look at them and purchase them. So it's like a jackpot. I don't know. I never been there yet. I hope my prompt will go there at some point. Also, what I noticed today is uh, prompts that go into this very, very popular place, like the top prompts on the website. Uh, they are featured on prompt basis Twitter account. Maybe they have other social media accounts. I don't know. But on Twitter, they feature them and people can also get to them from their Twitter. So that's also pretty cool. So what happens if your prompt doesn't reach the hot prompts and it just goes away from the newest prompt section? Well, bye bye prompt. Um, maybe it can be found later in through search or through your own third party promotion on social media or from somewhere else. But usually these prompts get pretty much lost and not a lot of traffic goes into them as from what I've seen. Don't get disappointed. Just you know, create new prompts, that's not a big deal. And yeah, if you're consistent enough, if your prompts are good, if they produce nice results and you select good images, then you have a really high chance of securing your first sale in the first couple of days, maybe in the first week. I myself got my first sale somewhere around in a week after I started. So yeah, I wish you a lot of luck. And prompt base is not that passive of an income if you think about it, because you have to supply new prompts all the time, but uh, it can offer you a great cash bonus uh, if you're putting in the efforts. If you want to know how big of a cash bonus, check this video out where I have been analyzing on real life examples, how people make money on prompt base and what exactly numbers they make. Thank you so much for watching. I see you in the new videos and I would be grateful if you subscribe. Thank you.